Perfect. Great. So first, council member, if you could just state your name and your title just for the record, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I'm Carlos Machaca, New York City Council Member representing District 38, which includes Sunset Park and Red Hook, Windsor Terrace, uh, the Bay Ridge Towers, Bensonhurst, Borough Park. It's a pretty diverse waterfront community. Fantastic. Uh, what was your first experience working with OBT? So I met OBT when I was a liaison working with the Brooklyn Borough President back in the day. Uh, I started working at the Borough President's office in 2004 as an intern. And OBT was um, in the orbit of youth empowerment. And so we got to see them as a borough player. And they were a, a very... Um, still are um, an organization that's dedicated, in, I think, in the right places uh, and doing doing the right things for the community to ensure that that, that youth get access to economic empowerment uh, and and really focusing on dignity. And that's what I saw from the very beginning. A lot of the stories, because I, I really do believe that um, OBT starts with the stories of, of the youth that really drives the discussion about what OBT is uh, through the faces of the youth that have uh, have had a transformation in their lives. Fantastic. Um, how has the Sunset Park community changed since you've become council member? Mm -hmm. I was elected in the fall of 2013 and I began my, my tenure as a council member in 2014 and since then, a lot has changed. And in so many ways, I think um, the changes have been incredibly positive. Uh, with my election brought a real sense of understanding of community power, of, of neighbors that had felt that their voices were not heard. And so my campaign, uh, unseating an incumbent uh, and that was something that had not really ha doesn't really happen in New York City politics. Incumbents are not are not removed uh, often, if at all. And this community really rallied around their needs and wants and vision of a participatory democratic community, a community that was already feeling the pressures of gentrification and said, "We need someone that's going to fight for us." Um, I say that because a lot of what's happened, um, and really through my partnership slash um, commitment to the community, their voices have been really running so much of the work that I'm doing as a council member, representing their their voices, their interests uh, for everything related to workforce development, for Sense of Park um, in general. And and I think what's what's really interesting is just seeing uh, things like participatory budgeting, uh, the, pe the people's budget, where, where thousands and thousands of people, last year we had over 11,000 people vote in a community initiative where they get to decide how to spend um, anywhere between two and four million dollars of capital city taxpayer money to improve their parks, their schools, their streets, uh, to bring security cameras on some of the avenues and libraries, uh, and all of that has been the energy of the community. So how has it changed? Uh, Sense of Park has really found not only their voice, but a vehicle to manifest their concepts, their visions, and their dreams um, with municipal government. Excellent. And you can see that those changes are reflected. Just We're seeing them. Just walk yeah, through walk Sunset around, Park right yeah. now. And, and some of the things you can see in the parks, like you can see the brand new yeah. fences. Uh, there is a new exercise equipment area in Sunset Park that was born out of people who use the park and said, we want to do that. I would have never come up with that idea. It was the community that came up with the idea, put a project on the ballot, got a campaign going, got people to vote for it, was one of the top vote getters, and then now it's materialized. The things that you won't be able to see unless you're a student are all the technological improvements to schools. So computer, uh, science and math labs, uh, design labs, where people are able to kind of fabricate things with 3D printers are now something that schools are asking for and winning in the participatory budgeting um, initiative. And so this is, this, is, this is Sunset Park. In some ways, 
Central Park has, has always been that. Now it's just at a whole other level of activism uh, that's really bringing other communities that had never really spoken to each other um, and has united them. It's wonderful. It speaks to, like you said, you're giving them a voice. And I think that's yes. Well, they're giving me the voice, and that's, that's, that's an important distinction. They're giving me the voice right. to be able to go and speak on their behalf. I'm, I'm channeling their voice. I, I don't give them anything. They give me the instructions to go and fight for what they want and what they need and what they deserve. You touched on this a little bit, but I'm interested to hear a little bit more. How do you feel workplace programs prepare young adults for a changing workplace? Mm. One of the things that's almost, um, I think, impossible to get right uh, immediately is, is the anticipation of workforce, period. The, the market is changing constantly. Uh, the, the, the city is in constant flux. Uh, industry and technologies change all the time. So, so for anyone to prepare uh, communities, is, is it, feel, it feels impossible. What I think is really important is that OBT really focuses on uh, the basics, really understanding how you get kids to show up for work on time with a sense of, of, of empowered um, movement through an office space uh, and, and be able to kind of attack any question in front of them. And that's what you see with any o OBT youth. And you hear them speaking at the galas, you hear them speaking in community sessions, and they understand their power. And so, so that's the, the kind of the first step and the foundation for, for OBT. I think the other piece, though, is working directly with businesses. And OBT has a relationship and a kind of coalition effort um, through the Innovation Lab and just other organizations like South uh, Brooklyn Industrial Development Corporation and the Economic Development Corporation and we've been convening spaces to understand what those jobs might be and then preparing our youth for that uh, and and so I'm in those spaces I'm listening to that so I get to fight for policies in the city to ensure that they have funding appropriate funding um, and initiatives that we have created uh, really in the last few years as a council member to create a digital literacy program and they get funding from me and Councilmember Antonio Reynoso and some others to give them that funding to be able to, to bring digital literacy skill sets for you to be ready for anything. Programming, um, internet related jobs, uh, or, or 3D printing, and make sure that they get the basic skills. As things change, they'll have a sense of confidence to be able to attack anything that is, is coming their way. Excellent. Council member, if you just forgive me, I had <laughs> also had right. a right. question, but thank you so much. I right. do, I, and I agree. I think that, um, in my view, it's adaptability. You know, mm. what I mean? you have to very much be able. That's the to, word. You have to, you know, and I think you hit it nail on the head as far as it's. In, it's very difficult to prepare for a changing yeah. workforce, but uh, you can always, you know, ensure that you're providing those programs and kind of like leaning into it rather than, you know, oh, this is the way it's always been done, and so right. we're going to teach, you know. There, there's no doubt that that the work that OBT does as a nonprofit, a local community organization that's constantly build, building relationships with immigrant communities who whose first language at home is not English, to be able to build a relationship that says over a generation, all my kids, if I'm in a family of seven, um, can go to a place and feel good about getting ready for the next the next chapter of workforce technology technology or not manufacturing or not, that that our, our children and our youth and our future leaders are going to get that, that, that sense of adaptability. They can, they can adapt to any environment that they're in. And that's important. That's really important. All right, just two more for you, Councilman. Yep. Um, are there any policies or legislation that might help the Sunset, that might help Sunset Park uh, prepare for the future of work? One of the... When we think about policy, legislation, we also have to think about land use. Mm -hmm. And so, so much of what is happening right now is, is really putting pressure on how we think about um, the way we use our, our, our land. We are a manufacturing, industrial, waterfront, maritime, um, rich uh, community. That We have a legacy of that. And so much of my work is to protect that uh, as, as the 
one responsible for any changes that might happen uh, in partnership with the community board, the borough president, the Department of City Planning, and any kind of private actors. So one of the things that's really important is for us to learn that. And so I want our youth to really understand that they have so much power and and as, as they give me voice, mm -hmm. they give me their voice to fight on their behalf, we got to understand how the process works. So really knowing the process, before we can change it with policy, just to know what the game is right. and how they can play a role in it. And a, and a commitment to participatory, participatory democracy allows us to, to bring and convene more people to the table to make decisions. So what kind of changes can we make? One is a real sense of dedication to um, uh, uh, capital improvements to the spaces themselves that the city owns. And that's happened in the last few years. And so some of the changes have been positive in seeing the Economic Development Corporation come in with hundreds of millions of dollars to improve the buildings that have been um, deferred in maintenance and not been activated for, for this kind of industry uh, and, and manufacturing. Things that are being made here locally now uh, food products, film, sound, studios, um, the South Brooklyn Marine Terminal, which is now going to be activated um, uh, with the Red Hook Terminal to bring shipping that's going to be connected to rail that has been approved by the city. So really it's capital investments. That's a budget. That's what we vote on at the city council, working with the mayor and the agencies. We want to make sure that that keeps coming in improving our property, and then working with our private property owners and saying, what are you going to do to connect jobs to our youth, to our adult population, to our parents? Um, and they have a responsibility as well. So really creating policies and using land use as a way to build a paradigm of stewardship that's not just about the city doing something, but it's about the private companies doing something and feeling like they have a responsibility to our community. And that's working with our nonprofits like OBT. And the Innovation Lab is an experiment right now to see how we can actually we can actually be within the belly of the beast, if you will, and create uh, a partnership that's that's authentic and real, and people can feel like there is an actual opportunity. Um, and so I'm I'm excited for that experiment, and I want to make that work. Last one, and a uh, bit of a cliche, so forgive me, but. Uh, let's say you meet a young person who's interested in public service. Yeah. What would be your what, advice what, to that young person <laughs> who's interested in What I say to every young person that I meet, and it's either at a, at a graduation or an OBT event or even on the subway, um, I, I tell them that you are so important to the future of our community. Your voice matters, and you need to start thinking about being the next council member, the next mayor. Uh, and and instilling in them a commitment to public service that they can not only appreciate in the future, but can appreciate today. Right. So I connect them to the things that we're doing in PB, participatory budgeting. And I said, you, you know, you worked on this project that now has, um, has, has brought fruit, computer lab, is that here, you did that. Right. Imagine what you can do if you were a council member. Imagine what you can do. And so when I, when I talk to kids, I connect them to their power and, and really what they have done in the past. They, they, kids and youth have already began to change, they've already begun to change their, their community. And, and so it's just, it's just restating their, their experiences in a way that allows them to think about a, a career in public service. And, 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 and I believe that a, a career in public service isn't, isn't, that's not where you end. I think this is a stop along the way. I think all of us, especially young, black, brown, um, uh, people of color, should think about uh, openly gay, LGBT community. These are the communities that I think have been so, um, um, have felt so separated from power, like government power. Um, and, and public service. And so those are the communities I think that we need to be inviting and opening the doors for and supporting uh, to really change the, the way government works. Um, and, and that's the message to young people I give every time, that they have, their, they have voice, their voice matters, um, and that government and their communities can be served by them being there fighting uh, and being a champion for, for their neighbors.
Excellent. Thank you, Councilmember Mitchell. I really appreciate it.